Hey there, I'm Matt, teacher, technology enthusiast, and a lifelong learner. I've been teaching with technology for 10 years, but I often took digital literacy for granted as I worked with adults already motivated to work in technical fields. After taking on a role as a PYP technology coach at an international elementary school and realizing the impact that technology now has on children's learning experiences, I knew that I would need to grow my understanding of digital literacy and find new ways to reach out to both my students and my peers. Through Cotail, local educators and global connections, a professional learning network was born. Over the past two years of research, discussion, action, failure, and triumph, we've learned much together. This video is the culmination of a project that started from a question, oft repeated by many small voices. How do I... How do I make my own app? How do I install mods for Minecraft? How do I make a green screen? How do I find copyright free music? How do I improve at this skill, at this game, at this challenge? I'm in love with this kind of question. The self-motivated learners, the inquirers and tinkerers yearning to explore further into the technology tools and extend lessons beyond the classroom. One of the greatest challenges to answering these questions is time. In a busy school with diverse students, languages, timetables, specialty subjects, and extracurricular activities, there's never enough time. How would I, as an educator, make time for these questions without taking the focus away from the curriculum's topics? As a technology integrator and coach, I collaborate to create lessons that leverage technology for learning without focusing on learning the technology itself. With digital native students and an increasing amount of user-friendly tools, students can explore deep space or under the ocean, simulate bustling marketplaces and craft energy efficient cities, all with the bare minimum of technical skill. Often students can learn the technical skills naturally through practice and exposition. I may teach about animation as a whole and explore it by creating stop motion videos with iPad apps, but the important learning is about animation as a form of expression, not about camera technique, sound effects, or set design. To make time for the students who are asking those questions, who want to extend their learning beyond the curriculum, I decided to turn to video and embark on a YouTube adventure. Parents and students often ask me about YouTube, and it was clear that it played an important part in their lives and learning. I thought I understood YouTube on a technical level, but I had little understanding of what content kids were watching outside of school, or what made a good quality, kid-friendly video. I decided to survey our students on their YouTube use and use that research to help identify what it was the kids liked most about YouTube for entertainment and learning. The results were tremendously informative, revealing a culture of media consumption that I believe most teachers and many parents are oblivious to. I made notes for my own video projects, but I realized that a big part of the experience would be helping our community better engage with and understand children's media use. More on that later. Throughout my work and Cotail projects, I experimented with more and more video editing techniques. I graduated from iMovie to Adobe Premiere for video editing software, and then to using After Effects for simple animations. I experimented with different screen capture, picture-in-picture, -picture, and green screen technologies to try and make videos more engaging and dynamic. I began to model popular YouTubers, record more classes for reflection, and watch hours of video tutorials. I'm still just scratching the surface, hacking my videos together to get them ready in time for corresponding units at school, but I can look back in the past year and see technical growth that I hope will continue in my future video projects. I created a branded YouTube channel, Matt Makes, to emphasize the type of projects I hope to make and to differentiate content for kids from the content I was making for teachers and parents. I've had success with a flipped classroom model in the past, but I didn't want to turn my videos into mandatory homework. I needed them to be entertaining, voluntary extensions of lessons that students would want to watch. I started out with my students' most popular type of video, gaming, by investigating games that kids were asking me about at school, and recording my playing experiences while modeling good digital citizenship practices. It was a challenge to keep things fun, and some of these videos were too lengthy to keep student attention. I created some how-to videos to support students working on video projects at school, and though I thought these were my least entertaining, they were very well appreciated by students who weren't always able to get my help during their busy school days. I realized one 8-minute video had been watched for over 300 minutes in just two weeks. It's still there if they need it in the future. The time-cost benefit was starting to look great, and the more valued I thought my videos were, the more I wanted to be a teacher YouTuber. Authentic audience engages content producers. 
With a mobile phone and a GoPro, I took my teaching on holiday, recording an outdoor experience to demonstrate that even the technology teacher needs to get outside and away from his computer sometimes. I received dozens of questions from kids interested in the plants and weather on the mountain. I made trailers for upcoming Minecraft lessons, dropping hints at strategies that would boost their understanding and success in complicated scenarios where less teacher explaining means more time engaging and collaborating at school. I began extending coding lessons for second grade students who weren't satisfied by the end of their unit, moving from making simple games to virtual pets. I have a list of future video ideas, more than two pages long already and growing. Throughout this experience, I continue to learn much about YouTube. I addressed issues with copyright claims, privacy, and the responsibility of publishing myself to such a wide audience with clear accountability in both my professional and my personal life. I realized that many kids were facing these issues, often with little support from families and teachers who didn't fully understand what internet video and connected learning meant to them. I decided the best way to complete my coattail report on this potentially lifelong project would be to try and bridge the literacy gap in our community. I wrote a report for parents on my YouTube survey, blogged about it, held parent conferences on balancing YouTube and student lifestyles, and created a video guide for parents on how to approach that problem. It's been featured in school magazines, local social media, and it's generating a lot of discussion so far. I hope it's the beginning of a bridge between adults and children, one that we can walk together as a shared learning experience. A shared learning experience. That's what being an educator with technology means in times where expert knowledge is harder and harder to obtain and change is always right around the corner. As globally connected learners, sharing with and supporting each other, we are learning from our mistakes and growing together. Thanks for being a part of that experience for taking the time to share your own adventures. And as always, thanks for watching.